folks? Welcome back to my kitchen and happy Memorial Day week, weekend, whenever you're watching this. Um, I'm Emily, I'm the registered dietitian here at Harvest Market and I am back with another meal kit recipe. We are making burgers this week. It is Memorial Day on Monday and yeah, we're making burgers because that's what you do for Memorial Day, right? But these aren't just your average everyday burgers. These are mozzarella stuffed caprese burgers. So super delicious. I'm doing these in a skillet. Um, I'm doing them in a skillet because um, it's easy. Um, it doesn't take very long and it ensures that our burgers don't dry out because we're doing turkey burgers this week and oftentimes turkey burgers can dry out on the grill over that really, really direct heat. So this will ensure that our burgers are cooked through, they're still really nice and juicy uh, and delicious. So let's get started. I have my meat in a bowl here. We're gonna want this in a mixing bowl because we're gonna be adding some seasoning to this. So I'm gonna use gloves because I have them and I like to work with my hands. Whenever I'm using raw meat, I like to use gloves, why not? Um, so, we need to season this really well because by itself, uh, it's going to be pretty bland, okay? So we're going to have um, a delicious seasoning. So we have burger seasoning one and burger seasoning two. And we've got a little um, olive oil and red wine vinegar going in. And then we've got some dry, we've got some Worcestershire in here as well. Um, that is gonna give that really kind of savory punch. I love adding Worcestershire sauce to meat whenever I'm cooking with it, whether it's meatballs, meatloaf, burgers, it's really delicious. Um, then we have our dry, so we're gonna have some grated parm in here. We've got some cavenders in here, some pepper, really delicious. Okay, so one thing that we wanna make sure we do when we're working with meat is we don't wanna overmix. So we're just gonna gently kind of fold everything in and folding is just means that we're just taking the meat and we're just kind of folding it over on itself. So we're not going in there and we're not going like this and being really, really rough with it. So I'm just kind of scooping from the bottom and then folding over on itself. Just like you would if you're making like a dough um, or if you're working with dough, same thing. You don't wanna overwork the dough, you don't wanna overwork your meat. Um, or else it's gonna get really mealy and mushy and nasty, especially turkey. So I'm just kind of taking everything and folding it over on itself. And this is gonna gently incorporate all of our seasonings in here. Okay, so I'm just taking the bottom, scooping it up over the top and pressing down very, very gently. And making sure we're just kind of, I like to kind of um, gather everything up around the bowl like this. All the seasonings and everything will stick to the meat. All right, looks good to me. Okay, I'm gonna use my butcher paper here because what we're gonna do from here is we have our giant meatball. <laughs> and basically we're gonna cut this in half, okay, as best you can. And these are gonna be our two patties, okay? So we have our two burger patties here and since we're stuffing them, I'm going to make a top and a bottom. So I'm going to further kind of cut these in half, just like this. So you have a burger, a burger and a burger. I'm doing a two person kit. And then you have an, a top and a bottom for each burger. So I'm just going to smoosh this out, each one. And just designate the one, designate a top and a bottom. It doesn't matter which. And we do want to make these nice and flat because we're going to be pressing them on top of each other. So we kind of want to make these a, a bit thin because when we put them together, obviously it's going to double in thickness. So I'm just kind of smushing, smushing it out. The great thing about meat is you can always just kind of rework it to whatever shape you want it to be. So even if you don't get it a perfect circle the first time, um, you can go back and kind of mold it to whatever you want. Okay, next up, we've got the mozz. So these are gonna be my bottoms here. It's gonna smush out a little bit more. And fresh mozz is going in right here and right here, beautiful. Okay, so now we have to seal these up. 
So we're gonna take that top piece and we're just gonna put it over that. And now I'm just working to kind of pinch and seal. We wanna seal these because we don't want all of that beautiful mozzarella cheese to come melting out, right? So this is where I kind of just shape it. I put it in my hand like this and I kind of just work the sides together and then press down so you get a nice circle. And you can just kind of look all around the sides and make sure that we have a nice seal. And you can see, obviously, you can obviously see where there's holes or gaps and you can just simply pinch that, close it up, and you have your burger. Ta-da! Let's do the other one, shall we? Okay, put the top on, kind of smash it down a little bit. I like to hold it up in my hand so I have a better view of what I'm doing and I can just kind of pinch it all around the sides just like this. Again we don't want it too thick because then it'll be raw in the middle. Okay so that's about what we're looking for right here okay. Beautiful. Lovely okay. Burgers are done being formed. I'm going to take one glove off and keep one on, why not? Save a utensil for now. Okay, so here is the trick. We are going to start these in a cold pan. Now I learned this technique um, from Cook's Illustrated or America's Test Kitchen, um, which has amazing, amazing resources um, if you're looking for different cooking information. I don't wanna steal this technique, I wanna give credit where credit's due. And so what we're gonna do is I have a big nonstick skillet right here. I'm gonna add in um, the oil. This is cold, it's not preheated. What we're gonna do is we're gonna preheat the burgers with the pan. This will ensure that the outside doesn't burn and the inside is raw. It's gonna have everything kind of cook all at once um, and evenly, okay? So we, don't, we aren't left with like a really raw <laughs> inside burger um, and a really burnt outside. So, cold pan here. We're gonna drop in that oil and we're just gonna swirl the oil a little bit about the pan. And then we're gonna bring our burgers to, you can use a spatula for this obviously, but I have my hands, so. Um, we're gonna bring the burgers over into the pan and we're gonna kind of smoosh them around that oil so they get some love, okay, just like this. And now we're gonna turn up our pan to medium, okay? So about medium, medium high. As soon as this starts to sizzle, we are going to lid it and we're going to, um, or cover it, we're going to cover it as soon as it starts to sizzle and start our three minute timer. So I will meet you right back here um, when we start to sizzle. Okay, we're just starting to sizzle. I have a little bit of bubble around my burgers. Again, we wanna bring this up to a medium, medium high. So a nice steady um, sizzle that you can hear and I'm gonna go ahead and put on my lid and we're gonna cook this for three minutes. Okay, it's been three minutes, so I'm gonna check and see how we are. So what I'm looking for is a brown on the, um, on the bottom side here, perfect. So we're nice and browned. We're gonna give them a flip and then cover right away for another three minutes. So this is really kind of trapping in all of the steam um, and moisture. And so this is going to make our turkey burgers really, really nice and juicy while still giving us a nice brown. Because again, like I mentioned, when turkey burgers are, they have a tendency to dry out pretty quickly, um, which is not desirable for a burger. And so we wanna make sure that the inside is cooked uh, before the outside gets too browned. And so by covering it, we're really trapping in a lot of the heat and a lot of the steam so that the inside can cook as well. And we wanna get that cheese all melty schmelty in there too. So again, three minutes on this side and meet you right back here. Okay, so we've done three minutes on this side. Ooh, and I'm melting beautifully. And then we're gonna flip and do another two and a half to three minutes on the other side. And the, the flipping just ensures that one side doesn't get too, too browned. Okay, and then cover. All right, so at this point, you're gonna wanna get your other stuff ready to go. So get your buns ready. Um, we want to get our Roma tomatoes 
And I also am going to grab my meat thermometer because that is a key tool in the kitchen, especially when we're working with ground meat um, and chicken or chicken uh, or meat that tends to um, kind of dry out quickly if you overcook it. So I'm going to grab my meat thermometer and I'll meet you right back here. All right, folks, let's check the temp on these burgers. See where we're at. We're looking for 160 to 165, preferably nothing over 165. Let's see how we're doing. It's looking good. Give it a second to come up. Ah. Remember, it's going to keep, um, it's going to continue to cook when we take it off of the heat. I am temping at 160. Beautiful. So if you're temping out, um, if you are not temping out at around 160 to 165, then do another flip and do a couple um, more minutes on the other side. But I am golden, ready to go. So, whoa, did you see that cheese pull? Oh my, deliciousness. Okay, so, whoa, turn this off the heat right away. We plate up and we cover. And we let these rest. Do not skip this step. We let those puppies rest. And then we're going to assemble our burgers, um, burger buns, as we wait. So I'm gonna give my, I washed off my Roma. This might be more than you want, but that's okay. Um, and then we're gonna grab our buns. Got some brioche buns here. You can toast these puppies up if you wanna like throw them in the pan. Sometimes I throw them in the pan with the burger juice um, to kind of soak up some of that burger juice. Is that gross? I don't know. I think it's flavor. Um, if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. We have our pesto here. I love pesto. Oh my gosh. And the, the thing about pesto is a little bit goes a long way, so you don't need a whole ton of it. And I'm just giving my, if you want to toast your burger buns, again, you can do that. You can pop them in the oven. You can pop them in your pan. If you don't want to, just take your bun and I'm gonna pesto the top and the bottom because I want maximum pesto flavor all in each and every bite. And again, do a nice thin spread. This'll, this'll give you plenty for each burger because it's very, very flavorful and a little bit goes a very long way. Okie dokie, so we're gonna do that. We get these toasting a little bit. I'm gonna continue to let my burgers rest. We wanna let those rest for five to eight minutes. Do not skip that step. It is crucial for a delicious burger. So I'll meet you right back here. Okay, we're ready to assemble our burgers. They have rested the full amount of time and we are ready to rock and roll. Um, and just FYI, I do give you instructions for grilling your burgers if you wanna grill. Um, but I do highly recommend utilizing this technique for these burgers, simply because it will ensure that your burgers um, don't stick to the grill and they don't um, dry out too, too much. Here we go. Pop these on here. Where's my top and where's my bottom? There we go, I switched. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do a couple tomato slices. If you want greens, like arugula, um, or spinach or whatever, you can do that. And we're gonna do a little, oh boy, balsamic drizzle here, right over the top. Smush those puppies down. Let's take a cross section of this. Ta-da! Beautiful mozzarella stuffed burgers lovely delicious they come together fairly quick um, just make sure if you do have a meat thermometer that you're using it um, because that will ensure that your burgers are cooked all the way through since we're stuffing them um, it's really important that you cook your burgers through um, and look at that cheese i just can't get over that stuffed cheese in there 
I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe again. Happy Memorial Day weekend and week. Um, I hope you guys all have a resting and relaxing one and delicious one. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you all next time.